Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Real Talk About Feminism. We are your hosts, Haley and Mackenzie. And this week, we are on episode 28 already, and we're discussing the sexualization of female sportscasters. Very interesting topic that I'm looking forward to hearing. Kind of like last week, where I totally led the episode. That's you this week, and this is all new to me as well. So I'm excited. Yes, this is going to be a really interesting little topic, and... um, I'm just going to dive right in with kind of like a personal story of why we came up with the idea to do this topic. Um, So for those of you who personally know me, and Ken's can attest to this, I'm extremely indecisive. It's one of my weaknesses. Um, And if you listen to our Vogue 73 questions, um, (laughs) then yes, you'll know this because we talked about how I was indecisive. You know what? It's okay. I am too. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm very indecisive and I have been kind of exploring different career paths and different options for what I want to do. And I was thinking about becoming a sportscaster um, because I would, I think it would be really fun to be in front of a camera. Obviously, I enjoy doing this podcast with Ken's. Um, I think it'd be really fun to like, just like, talk and like narrate things and also be able to dress up and like meet cool people and go to fun events. I just think it would be really fun. And um, so I had my family and my friends, they were like trying to teach me um, everything about sports because I don't really know anything. And to be a sportscaster, you kind of have to know. So um, my friend was helping me research this a little bit and he Googled female sportscasters and the search results were very disappointing. Um, And so that kind of just gave me the idea that we should talk about it because it was just a simple little thing that made me super disappointed kind of in like the way society goes and how the standards are, are very um, different and sometimes Mm -hmm. sexualized um, for women in positions that men are not sexualized in. So that is a long little summary of why uh, we wanted to do this episode. But before we dive into it and really get into the bulk of things, we are going to have Ken's do our feminist highlight. Okay. (laughs) Ooh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, so today's highlight is Kathy Sullivan. Does that name ring a bell to you? I feel like... It does, yes. Mm -hmm. It might just be a very popular name. I don't know, but it does kind of ring a bell. Yeah, it is kind of common. But um, when I was, you know, researching feminist icons, feminist moments, this came up, this name, and I was like, oh my gosh, I recognize that. But when I dove in, I was like, I have like never heard of this for some reason. It's a really big deal. So Kathy Sullivan, she's the first American woman to ever walk in space. Oh, okay. So pretty big deal, right? Yeah. So um, this happened in 1984 and she grew up learning all about exploration. Um, There's a couple articles that I pulled my information from that I'll link. They were very interesting and um, had a lot of details about her childhood and her early life. And in both of them, she mentioned that her mom was very supportive of this. Like, yeah, you can be whatever you want when you grow up. And She also brought up the fact that in all of the the magazines, movies, everything that she was taking in, all this information, it was only about men. And in the article specifically, she was like, that didn't intimidate me. Like, I didn't think anything of it, which was really cool. And um, so she learned to love like ocean, space, exploration, just in general and learning about the world. So she was admitted into NASA's class in 1978, and this was actually the first class that brought women into its astronaut ranks. So she's like such a history maker. Yeah. Um, um, like I mentioned, in 1984, she was the first American woman to walk in space, and that spacewalk was three and a half hours long. Wow. Is that a yeah. long time? She actually said it wasn't. Okay. Yeah, but that's a long time, <laughs> at least yeah. in my mind. So in addition to exploring space, she didn't stop there. 
in June of 2020, so very recently, she made history again as the first U.S. woman to reach the deepest spot in the ocean. Wow. I know, right? So cool. She reached the Challenger Deep, which I Googled it. I wasn't super familiar. It's the deepest known ocean trench, like known to humans. So like that's a really big deal. So she went into space and then she went way deep into the ocean and made history multiple times during each event. So very cool. And she's not like super young anymore. Like I, I think she's in her mid 60s, almost 70s. And like she's still kicking it. So very cool. Wow. Well, that's so interesting, Kathy Sullivan. Um, definitely pretty cool that she's been like as high up as you can go in space and as deep as you can go in the ocean. Right. It's pretty cool. Blew my mind. Like with um last week's highlight, Kim Ang, like mm-hmm. my eyes were literally just like glued to the articles. I couldn't get enough of it. Very interesting to read about. Wow, that's so cool. The, um, that's one of those ones that would be really interesting to do an entire highlight on. Just yes. She's so There's cool. so much about her life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. We will um, put those pictures on the podcast Instagram. So go check those out. Um, so let's get back into um, kind of the story that I was telling about why we wanted to talk about the sexualization of female sportscasters. So, um, like I said, like I kind of ended off, um, me and my friend, um, we were just talking about it and he Googled top, he Googled something like top female sportscasters or like how to become a female sportscaster something like that. And the first few results were, hottest female sportscaster and um like most you know stuff like that just like all about their bodies and so I saw that and he had said something like oh that's disappointing that that's what the focus is and so that's when I was like yeah we need to do an episode on this so when preparing for this episode I actually decided to do it myself and to google it um just to see what the results are and you guys can do this too you can google it and see that we are not lying but so I, I searched in Google, just a regular Google search, um, female sportscasters, that's it. And the top two results were the top 10 hottest female sportscasters in the world. That was the first one. And the second one was hottest female sports reporters. And then it says, people also ask, who is the hottest female sports announcer? So those are the results for when you just search female sportscasters. And like I said, do it on your own. See that we're not lying about this. So then I decided, well, if the top three results are about the physical attractiveness of these female sportscasters, let's look up male sportscasters. So when I Googled male sportscasters, the top results were famous male sportscasters and list of sports announcers. So, so different. Yes, so different. And all I'm I'm searching the same thing, but just male or female, male sportscaster mm-hmm. and female sportscaster. And it's just really disappointing that the the top two results for the female sportscasters, it's about their bodies and about how hot they are. And in my opinion, and I think you agree with this, Ken's. Um I mean, I think it's very flattering at times when it's right to be called hot, but out of all of them, that's in my opinion, out of everything, like being called pretty, being called beautiful, being called hot, being called hot is most definitely more about your body, in my opinion. Yeah, I I agree. So like, it's not just like most attractive female, it's like hottest sportscasters. Mm -hmm. And so that's just really upsetting and annoying to me that that's the focus. And it's not the, it's not um, top 10 greatest female sportscasters. Like, it's never a focus on their actual work and what they're actually doing. It's about their bodies. Right. It's not about how good you are at your job or like Mm -hmm. your accomplishments, your education. It's like, for them, it's 
not saying the women are in this job to get that said about them. I'm saying like how society views them Yeah, is like, it's only about their body, how they look on camera, you know? Yes. Yeah. And it's not like that for the men, the men, it's all about their merit and their accomplishments and how good they are at their jobs. It's not how their bodies look. So Mm -hmm. that's really disappointing. Like I said, go Google it, see for yourself. Um, So this kind of prompted me to look up um, female sports reporters and kind of some of their stories of this focus being on their bodies. And Sports Illustrated put out an article that is titled Sexual Harassment Toward Female Sports Reporters is Far Too Common. Um, And we'll link this in the show notes. But this story is about a female sportscaster and they did not say her name for obvious privacy reasons. Um, Mm -hmm. And because this is a, uh, it's a sad story. So um, I'm going to just read the story because it's not that long, but the way that they put it is, um, I just don't think I could rephrase it into any better words. So I'm going to read this and then we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, So it starts out. um, There was the major, There was the Major League Baseball player who dropped his pants in the locker room and called out her name, so she'd turn around and see his penis hanging out. Then there was a player who started flirting with her at the venue before graduating to calling her room on the road, repeatedly asking her to, quote, come down and watch a movie in his room, end quote. She said no, of course, but the player in question wouldn't speak to her for months after she declined his advances. But the worst part was the rumors. At one point, there was an NHL player who pulled her aside to say that one of his teammates was telling everyone on the team she covered that they had slept together. There was no paper trails, just my word against his. And since I was fighting an unknown enemy, I couldn't even defend myself, said the female television sports reporter who has worked at the network level. If you think such stories are uncommon, think again. Most women who work in the sports media have similar stories to tell, end quote. That's terrible. And it's terrible that like it really was like just her word against his because I'm guessing the perpetrators got no punishment. Right. And like that's really disappointing and upsetting um, because like she when she was, you know, at work covering these sports events, like she was still being sexually harassed because those comments that sexual harassment and so she's trying to focus trying to do her job and do a good job but she's being distracted by these men making these vulgar comments at her Mm -hmm. and then even when she was at her hotel room on the road this man would call her hotel room and tell her to come down and watch a movie with him and like she didn't want that and she'd asked him multiple times to stop calling her room and like it's sad because that's the story of one female sports caster Mm -hmm. and you know how she just was not being left alone and you're right like I'm sure that those um sports players that makes me sound like I have known nothing about sports (laughs) (laughs) athletes um I'm sure that those athletes received no punishment but they really made it honestly like a hostile work environment for her and I don't think it's really thought about in that way because she's traveling around and she's covering different events and different teams but like that is a hostile work environment yeah from the outside looking in like it looks like a very glamorous cool job that like not a lot of people do a very cool opportunity Mm -hmm. but all I can think about right now is like they're not when they cover male sports Mm -hmm. male athletes they're not eye candy they're not there to like stroke their egos or hype them up they're literally they're just doing their job it is a job. Right. And so it's just so sad. Like, like you said, she's definitely not the only one. I'm glad they didn't say her name. Um, it's probably best. They didn't like actually call out the players either, but they, pro- they should have because they needed to be punished. But I just feel so bad that like, they're literally going to work. And like, like you, that's like something that, I mean, I don't know if you dreamed about it, but I think after this, we were like, I'm done. I'm not doing that anymore. But like, this is obviously a career that like they wanted to go into and this is how they're treated. Right. And it kind of like, it's upsetting and disappointing that like, 
I can just imagine like those things happening to you and you just being like, well, it's just part of the job. Like I'm not going to make a big fuss about it because these are like professional athletes and they have money and they have power and influence. And, you know, if I was in that position, I could see it being very easy to be like, well, it's not that big of a deal. Like who's going to believe me? It's and like she said, it's my word against his he has way more money than me. He can get better lawyers and he could ruin my career easier than I could ruin his, you know? Like, it's just so sad because, like, the balance of power sometimes, like, it really makes it difficult and hard to, like, feel like you can stand up for yourself and it's scary. And so I really feel bad for these female sportscasters who are being sexually harassed by these players and, mm-hmm. you know, other people. Like, you're right. They're just trying to do their job. Right. And I I just know there's people out there who are like, well, that's the job they chose. Like it just comes in the industry. No, it shouldn't. Like that's why we're talking about it. The issue is not that they chose to go into something that they love to do. That's not Mm -hmm. the issue. The issue is the male athletes who think of them as just people who ask them questions or are there to sleep with when they're on the road. Like that's Mm -hmm. not what it is at all. No, it is a career. It's a job and it's something, like you said, that they were passionate about doing and they finally made it big. And, um, and so like, that should be something that's such a good experience for them. And unfortunately it is spoiled and I'm sure that it's not all bad, but like, unfortunately these people who choose to make these sexual comments and sexualize these reporters and these newscasters, like kind of ruin it. And like, Mm -hmm. That's not what it's, that's not what they're there for. They're there to do their job. And it's just really upsetting. Yeah. Um, so something that was just interesting is that, like, obviously there's sexual harassment, like, all around. Like, sexual harassment of men and women, like, it's not just a one gender issue, But in this situation, the women are being sexualized and and the players are are harassing them. And, you know, it's just interesting that it's such a big deal in a world that is so male dominated with these sports. Because obviously the story of this reporter, like there's female athletes, plenty professional female, female athletes. But... This reporter that was talked about in the story, she obviously um, was covering male sporting events and male athletes Mm -hmm. and male teams. And it's just so interesting that the amount of, like, women that receive these sexual harassment comments and, you know, all of these things, it's just so interesting that it's in a male-dominated career. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it lines up with, what we've seen from society and how a lot of men think about women. Right. Right. And unfortunately, like it doesn't need to be said. And I don't care. Like some people will make excuses and be like, you, I'm going to say this and you're going to be so mad, but boys will be boys. Why would I be mad? I hate boys will be boys. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, some people make excuses and be like, oh, well, boys will be boys. That's just how it is. You got to deal with it. Or like, oh, he's just flirting with you. Like, just ignore it. Like, I'm sorry. Dropping your pants and dangling your penis around is not that. That is not. No. And honestly, (laughs) I feel like that sort of thing, like, I feel like she could, like, Charge him for something, like she public totally indecency could've. or something. She, yeah, that is public indecency. She could have. But like you mentioned, like, there really is a power balance. And especially, like, in a locker room, like, I would feel so intimidated if I was her as well. It's like, right. I just got to get out of here. Like, that's probably what she thought. You know, and she's like, I'm literally here for work. Like, let me just get out of here, do my job, and go home. Right. And, I mean, I'm thinking... Yeah, like, she definitely got flashed. And people Mm -hmm. pay major fines and can go to jail for flashing people. Mm -hmm. But why didn't that happen? Because he's a professional athlete. Right. So I feel like there needs to be some sort of system that protects these female sportscasters because obviously they are more sexualized than male sportscasters. And 
So I feel like there needs to be some sort of system that can protect both genders, you know, in cases like this, in this career path. But they need to be protected when they're put in these situations where they're receiving sexual harassment on a daily basis at work. And it is scary to be like, hey, um, this person dropped their pants and, and flashed me when I was trying to work. Like, what can we do about this? Like, I don't know. Maybe it's scary to come forward to the network that you're working for because you don't want to get fired. And right. I'm not saying that the network would, but like, just like thinking about that, maybe that's what's going through your mind. Like, what if I get fired? What if, what if something happens or what if they let me go so that we keep it all quiet and they pay me off? Something like that, you know, like so many things could happen. And so I feel like there should be a system that really protects people in these situations and maybe there is and if there is then it needs to really be elevated and it needs to be a focus because they need to feel like they are protected they do like uh, I wonder if they have HR or something similar I mean they have business at the end of the day like they should but it makes you wonder like you said like if these systems that are already in place are actually effective or if women even feel comfortable stepping forward because of the field they're in. Right. And honestly, like, like the article said, it said, if you think such stories are uncommon, think again, most women who work in the sports media have similar stories to tell. Like if they already have a system in place that's meant to protect these women who experience this, then it's obviously not a, an efficient system or an effective system at all because many women have these same stories to tell like the article says so it's sad thank you so much for listening everybody don't forget to follow us on instagram at real talk about feminism and subscribe to our youtube channel real talk about feminism podcast